The current picture of Benghazi brings nostalgic feelings of how things used to be. Hundreds of families no longer have a place to call home, and the once prosperous city is now in a state of ruin. Many people left after continued fighting between the Libyan army and various armed groups, but for those left behind, their story remains one of despair. One official from the House of Parliament came to us and promised to find a solution to our problem. He also said that there are houses ready and will be given to us in an area on the outskirts and that we will be relocated there. We don't know when, before or after Ramadan. We don't know. Nobody gave us an answer. Nothing at all. Currently, Libya's administration is divided between an elected parliament and an Islamist militia-backed government in the West. Hundreds of militias have aligned with either side, all in a struggle for power and territory. However, some local residents have become volunteers, supporting the Libyan army, which is under the command of the internationally recognized government. They hope to crush the militia forces and bring some sense of order and calm in the country. I would like to reassure the local residents and families who are displaced or refugees outside the city that the field situation is under control thanks to God. We are now waiting to disarm some landmines and disarm some booby traps that were made by those terrorists. UN-backed talks between the rival factions have not yet managed to strike a power-sharing deal. This has left the country under the mercy of aid organizations as money allocated by either government is very little. And with regard to international organizations, they helped the Libyan aid agency and the Red Crescent, but it was very little. When I say that Benghazi is a disaster zone, I expect an entire international community to view Benghazi as a disaster zone. They should get together and save the residents in the city of Benghazi. The Benghazi Crisis Committee, which coordinates efforts to help the city's displaced families, says according to official figures, there are about 140,000 displaced people in Benghazi alone. The aid we receive doesn't add up to even 1% of what we need. So when I have that 1,000 displaced families and you give me 7,000 relief packages, to whom will I give those? And with few hospitals and schools remaining open after the months of conflict, it's uncertain how long it will be before Benghazi regains a sense of normalcy. Leslie Murungu, CCTV.